Okay. So Chad Nelson was here in January, and he's back again, and he's very dynamic, and he's, there he is, see, look at him. He's tall, he's tall and he's dynamic. And he, last time he talked about um, the entrepreneur's journey into internet marketing. So it was a lot about SEO, and it was a lot about the how-tos of jumping into your business. So if you haven't had a chance to see that, you can go back to January of 14 and see it. This time, it's all about reputation. It's all about reputation. And he's been testing this on his own company. Um, he is the president of Champion Online Marketing. And he's got a few things to say. And we've got a lot of technical stuff in the, in the room today. I know it's very interesting. We're trying to live stream it. And we will find out. Oh, we're getting the yes. So that's good. So, Mr. Chad. Are you ready to roll? I'm ready. Oh, it's all up to you then. Thank you. So um, there's some things that you guys have talked about just now in the warmth that we're going to go over and just kind of reiterate, reiterate what was told. My name is Chad Nelson. I've been a business owner for 17 years. Um, I am the president of Champion Online Marketing. We're in the lead generation business, so our job is to make the phone ring for other companies. And we do that through uh, a variety of online reputation marketing strategies. And the whole idea is to rank high and also have a great reputation. So you not only want to be found out, but you want to make sure that reputation you work so hard many times years offline gets transferred online so that not only do they find you, but you're the obvious choice to do business with. So last time I was here, we talked about kind of some techniques of how to get found. This time I really want to talk to you guys about referral marketing online, which is reputation, and your online reputation, which is really referral marketing online is how I want you to, to think about that. Uh, I know there's some experts uh, in the room, so we're really gonna dive into educating you about how expansive this is and how many different areas this really can affect your business, and then I wanna give you some actionable items on some things that you should probably do, be doing with your own reputation and share with you a little bit more of kind of a blueprint of what we do and you guys are more than welcome to you know, use that for any of your, your own endeavors if you like. Uh, referral marketing, and I'm using my mouse, so this might get pushed around once in a while. Um, so they've always been one-to-one. -one. Um, John refers to Susan, Richard refers to David, Anna refers to Andrew. Those are great, and that still works. Referral marketing is still great one-to-one. -one. The big difference is today, it can now be done online. It can be done at, at Google, Yelp, Bing, Angie's List, City Search, Yellow Pages. There's multiple places online though now that you can go and give a referral online. And an online referral is called a review. So who here, let's start with who here has left an online review before? Okay. So quite a few people have left, so uh, most people know what I'm talking about here. Is the, what's the big difference between a referral for word of mouth and a referral for online? Which is a review. Uh, Word of mouth is just one-on-one, -on -one. online, many people can see it. Exactly. So uh, while we all should endeavor to get word of mouth referrals, it's a great way to grow your business if you're doing a good job. And we don't want to just find new people. We want to get referrals. But if you get that person to leave a referral or a review for you online, that's potential to go to one hundreds or ones to thousands and several thousands. That's something that can be up there that lots of people can see. And uh, can help you, really help you get some business. So let's take an example here. Let's just say that you were looking for a service in town. I don't care if it's a, a plumber, a CPA, an orthodontist, a dentist, a local business attorney, and there were three reviews. You found three companies, and their services are all the same, and you saw these different types of reviews. Which company would you pick? C. Do you think most people would do the same thing? The fact is, as we'll get into, that could be the worst company, right? But online, they look great. So um, has anybody here changed a buying decision when they've seen reviews or bad reviews? Okay. So uh, and every day, people are looking for all these different types of local businesses. Uh, the locksmiths um, would be some other ones, uh, uh, real estate agents, uh, mortgage brokers. The list just goes on and on. And these are now really going to be tied into what you have. So the game online marketing has changed. This is something that's been coming on for a while. Uh, but five-star companies really have, for now, really have an advantage over their competitors in the marketplace. The good thing is, most of your competitors don't know about it yet. They're starting to get familiar with it. A lot of them, they might have heard about it, but they don't understand quite the, how deep this goes. 
So we're going to do a couple things today. Is we're going to educate you so you know about it. We're going to go, I'm going to take a few minutes and really show you all the different areas that this can impact you. And then I mentioned also then show you, okay, so now that I know this, what can I do? Because it can really help you get some business. I'll give you an example of people, business owners, not knowing about that. This. One of our newer clients is a gym. This gentleman took the majority of his life savings, bought a gym, put $75,000 into fixing it up. And if you Googled his gym, there was one, or you did gyms in his area, it's in Northern California, there was one review that showed up on Google. Think it was a nice one? <laughs> yeah. What a dump. Or the last owner was wanting to get out of it. He kind of let things go along. So it's totally redone the place. But didn't even know that when people were looking him up or looking for a gym in his area, that that's what was showing up for him, and that was it. And that, that will turn some people off. So, so what I'm mentioning right now is a lot of people, business owners or competitors, don't know about it. If you're in the business of helping other companies, you can take this and give this knowledge to them, but they don't know. So if you can get in there now for a lot of other people, business owners, to catch on, you can really, really make a difference in your business. So what I'd like to talk to you about right here is, is four marketing game changers. Now, when I spoke last time, I had more slides but we ended up having to go really fast because there were some interactions. So I have a few less slides. We have a little bit smaller of a crowd today. So I'm open to that to see where things, and by the way, I'm going to, what's my, my drop dead time, or my end time? 12.15. 12.15, so we have about 45, 50 minutes. If I notice that it's going too slow because of our discussion, I'll move things around. But if people have questions as they come up. As long as we can keep this moving, I'm happy to take questions as we go along here. So. Let's look at marketing game changer number one. Google created oh, two or three years ago now 80 million Google Plus pages. Why should you care about that? And how does that affect you? Because whether you wanted them to do this for you or not, if you have a business or if your clients have businesses, they, if they could, and for most businesses, they created a Google Plus page. And what does that mean now? Whether you like it or not, when somebody searches for your business with the city, so if you search just about for any company name in the city, it's going to bring up their Google Local or Google Plus page here, their Google Local listing. A little bit of information about the company, and it's going to give their reviews. In this case, this guy's not doesn't have a great review here going on. Two and a half out of five stars. Also, it's going to give some some information about your about your company here. Uh, as we talked earlier, is and this is one of the questions I was going to ask, is this client can actually have hundreds of satisfied clients. Who is more likely to complain, or she's not complaining, who's more likely to be proactive about doing something? Somebody that's happy, Complain. somebody that's angry, right? More angry, we have burn our saddle. You could do everything, you could bend over backwards. Typically it's the people you bent over backwards more for that come back to bite you in the butt, right? But no matter what you do, somebody's going to blame you for whatever went wrong, for their marriage failing, for their life falling apart, whatever it is, you're, you're the reason they're going to go on and do this. So you really have to have some systems and processes in place to combat this because we're all really, especially if you don't have any, we're all one bad review away from bad reputation online. So it's something that you that you certainly need to be um, aware of here. The next slide is, <coughs> second big cha game changer is reviews are now a big part of, uh, of online marketing. You have to have them compete. Why? Because, let's look at the Google Maps results. Uh, this is Google Maps where they show the map and the little balloon. It's going to show your reviews right there. Social media. This is a screenshot from Facebook. Go to Facebook and, and look up any different type of industry. Look up a dentist here for around town or any, any area and see what kind of reviews you have or that are available there. Local directories. So in, when you do a Google or Bing or Yahoo search, these, we're going to focus on Google obviously because they have about 70% of the searches. Besides their local listing, here's a Yelp. Dot com. Yelp, by the way, I heard you mention your reviews going down. Were you talking about Yelp when you paid? They're being sued for extortion for <laughs> stuff like that because that's not an uncommon story. I've probably heard that 20 times over the last two, two years from 20 different business owners about that. But the reality is, the, listen, the reality is, is that's the way it is right now. You're getting clients, so. Yep. So there's that. Here's Yellow Pages. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not. It goes above me on this. So the more places you can have it, the better. But they're going to show all different local directories. Sometimes on Yahoo now, you might even see like a city search review or a city search link. And if you have a review in city search, it's going to make you look better. There we go. Um, it's affecting that your SEO rankings, which is how high you rank. It'll also show up on your pay-per-click ads. Does everybody know what pay-per-click ads are, by the way? 
okay? Just in case, paid ads, which are not showing here, are usually over on the side at the very top, and they're called pay-per-click because somebody clicks on them and they pay money. If you have a good reputation, um, a lot of times now, um, you can have those show up. You, actually, you can if you want to. You can have those show up. Sometimes when you're doing some of the local ads, they're going to show up, so you want to make sure with your, uh, um, with your stars, you want to make sure that you have some good stars. All right. Uh, one other one I want to uh, want to talk about is the mobile internet searches. As we know, mobile is set very soon to overtake internet searches. What I mean by that, I didn't quite say that right. There's going to be more searches on the internet from mobile devices, phones and tablets, than there are from laptop computers. It's close to around 50-50 right now. Over time, the mobile devices, think about it when you're at home now. Uh, you're sitting on the couch and you have your phone, right? Sometimes you don't even, your laptop could be just right there in the kitchen table. You won't bother to go 10 feet, or if you have your tablet, you'll just use that. And mobile really shows these types of things prominently. When you do a search, here's a couple searches I just did the other day, and I took a screenshot here. The first one on the left is for Sacramento Roofing Companies. And I just picked a zip code like I was doing a local search there. In Sacramento, no reviews for any of them. Here's one I just did for Rancho Cordova. And we've got one here, 4.9. You can't quite read it because of my screenshot. 4.9, it had around 11 or 15 reviews, something like that. Who here, is there any contractors in the room, by the way? Okay. So, who here, anybody used a contractor? If you've used multiple contractors in your life, no offense, unfortunately, somewhere along the line, you probably have a bad contractor story, right? So, I think somebody has a great opportunity right here to stand apart from the crowd. Or let's look right here. If you were calling and you were looking for somebody to come work on your roof locally and you saw this and right when you searched on your tablet or your phone and you saw one company had 11 4.9 reviews, might you contact them first? Or certainly be on your two to three, however some people like to get three, four bids, whatever your modus operandi is, whenever you're going to want to get a contractor. That certainly would be on mine. In fact, that probably be the first one that I would call. So the mobile searches, and that's straight from when you just hit enter on my phone. That's a screen. I took a screenshot from my phone, emailed it to myself, and that's what we saw. Marketing game changer number four. Uh, all of your marketing, SEO, social media, pay-per-click, local marketing, doesn't work if you've got some bad reviews online. So we always, without a doubt, would say, hey, let's market your business with website, SEO, social media, all that. As this came along, we're like, okay, now let's help build your five-star reputation. If you have this going on for your business, so your clients have this going on for your business, I'm going to go out and let them say that this is the wrong order for them or for you if you're having issues. What are you doing here by driving people? You're, driving, you're spending money to drive people to see this about you or your clients. You're just paying to get your competitors, their competitors' business. Because when they see that, they're going to say, no way. Oh, but look at this guy, 4.9, 11 stars over there. Thanks for your... Thanks for spending a buck to get that mail piece in my hand. Now that, because I knew I wanted to, uh, I needed that service, but I hadn't get around to it. Now that I've gone online and I saw what you guys look like, I found a good local company that I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. So I would say build a stock star reputation first, market your business, get more customers. Or at the very least, what we'll generally do is if you have some issues, or you should at least be doing it at the same time. This is something you really need to put in your to-do list as a business owner. So you should be building and cultivating this five-star reputation as you go along. Um, I'm going to pepper in a few stories, actually, as we go along. I keep forgetting to look at my notes. But um, I'll give you a perfect example of how, how this can affect a business. Um, of a dental practice that I have. Not a client of mine, but a dental practice that I know the owner of. And uh, he had a few bad reviews online. He had about four three or four people that were really going after him online. These were people he went out of his way for, actually even did a pro bono work for a couple of them, you know, tried to help out, and just started ripping them online. And I didn't know uh, this was going on. I actually met him after the fact. It affected his business so much, he changed his business name. Now, he has two practices. Anybody here been in business for a long time, gone through a business name change, especially when you have retail locations? Signage. Brochures, marketing, website, bank accounts, credit cards, clothes for the employees, everything you can possibly think of that you forget. When you go through a business change, you start realizing how many different places your name and logo are. This was thousands and thousands of dollars in expenses that he went through to do all this. Because he was so distraught, it was affecting him so much. 
uh, that's all that people were showing. People were showing, or when people looked for him in town, that's what was showing up. Oops. You guys still see the screen there? Yeah. Oh, see. 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 Sorry about that. Here's my mouse, and if my finger accidentally touches it, I get out of my presentation. Are we back into the first slide? Yes. yes. Okay, let me fast forward a little bit. <clears throat> Game changer number four that I want to cover is um, buyers trust reviews almost as personal recommendations, as much as family and personal recommendations. Here's a big study from Bright Local. I'm going to show you another one again. 72% of buyers trust reviews as much as a personal recommendation. Personal recommendation: somebody, your friend, your business colleague, a relative, mother, brother, sister. That's a personal recommendation. Somebody that's a business owner or, or somebody you have a professional relationship that you trust gives you a review. You really um, really trust that review so it has the opportunity to give you what we call pre-sold customers. Some referrals when they come to you are some of the, the easiest business, I guess you, you want to say, that you get because they already have a pre-sold trust level from you from somebody that they trust. And a lot of times people will get 70 or 80 percent of the people that come to them on a referral level to do business with them. The average, just so you know, the minimum that you need to hit that trust level online based on their study is uh, six six reviews about you and uh, people generally look to find about 10 reviews so the more the better and the more you're just going to stand apart and look better but six is your minimum i really would i would submit that 10 really should be a better minimum do you think that might help you if you were talking to somebody you had one of their relatives sitting in front of you or their friend telling them what a great job you did if you can sit there and say hey this is what we can do for you not like don't take our word for it here i just have to bring my I bring my tablet with me. Let's just get online real quick. Here, let's see what else. Let's go to Angela's. Let's go to Yelp. Let's go to uh, Google. Let's go to Bing. Everywhere they look, there's this validation of what a great job that you do. Do you think that might help you get some business, get some business, and have some people have trust to move forward with you? I think it would. Mm -hmm. We have a sales technician that um, shows his personal reviews with his name in it to his customers on site. 98%. That's awesome. What a great sales representative goes and out on his own. And he just did that on his that. own and just, oh, but he's so proud of, he is so proud of what people say about him. I, that's an awesome idea. And why not be proud? And we should all be proud. If you've been working hard, you've spent years, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, aches, pains, bumps, bruises, learning lessons, all this, you have experts in what you do, why shouldn't you tell other people? Reminds me of a guy I met downtown. Um, downtown Sacramento, he had this lighting business. And uh, he wasn't telling the world what he did. He spent over a million dollars on this big showroom. He was an older gentleman. He was trying to get a, his um, grandson to come in and take over the business. And he was distraught because this guy opened up a 10 by 10 office and would kill him because he was getting out online and getting found and getting reviews. And here's this guy. How can this guy outsell me? I, I, he was emotionally distraught. I put 50, 60 years of my life in here, millions of dollars in this showroom so people can come in and look and this guy just opens up a, an office at a Regis and he's out selling. So let the world know what you've got. Let them know how happy. Let them know they've been around for 40, you know, been around 20, 30, 40 years. What a great job. I do. So let's look at this. This one actually one of the biggest shifts in marketing in the last 10 years. This is from Nielsen. Nielsen, as you know, is, um, I'm sure everybody here should be familiar with Nielsen. They are the preeminent authority for a lot of studies and research across a wide variety of industries. This is a study by Nielsen Research. Nielsen, excuse me. 92% of people trust recommendations from people they know. No surprise there, right? What's the next one? Consumer opinions posted online. 70%. We're coming up to three out of four. That could be an old employee. That could be a competitor who left that. 
We're not sure of the, the story, right, of how that got there. But, you know, if they have a bunch, generally you're going to say, hey, they're not all. Um, let's look at some of the other ones. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have some of these other ones, but it's going to get you more trust than having an editorial. So in the Sacramento Bee or whatever the local, you know, the, the paper is up here. Or a branded website. You can have a nice ten, twenty thousand dollar branded website. It's not going to get you as much trust as having some reviews online. Email. Um, emails you signed up for and you're on people's newsletters aren't going to get you as much trust. Now these are all excellent. I think if you can have an editorial, that's awesome. You better have a nice professional website. If your website looks like you read, like my first website, you read a book on Dreamweaver and HTML in the middle of the night over a couple of weeks, right? Then your website probably looks like you read a book on HTML or WordPress and put your website up. You really want to have that professional look to validate all these things. They all connect and make you stronger and better. Um, and should you have emails to sign up for? Should you have something on your website? Hey, top three things that uh, uh, plumbers will rip you off for. How we save our average customer $300 because we don't give them needless X, Y, Z. Have something on there, some value. When you have prospects or clients, should they be on an emailing list? If you have customers that might need something annually or semi-annually, should they be on an email list that automatically goes out with an autoresponder, hits them up and saying, hey, it's winter time, have you gotten your dryer vents? Or excuse me, your, um, your heating vents clean. When it's summertime, hey, have you had your uh, air conditioning coils clean the last 10 years? You know, whatever it is for you to help your business, these are all things that you should be doing. However, um, you know, the number one thing I would put on your list right now is getting some getting some reviews online. Mm -hmm. Chad, I had a quick question on yep. on reviews um, on online reviews. What is um, in place to keep a, a, to regulate that uh, business end of it rather than changing his business name? Uh, having his friends and family post positive reviews. Yes. Or talk to the people that, why didn't you talk to the people that gave me that review and find out what their reasoning was? Uh, he went and he tried to engage them. There were people, like I said, and this was the course that he took. It was a course that had already happened. By the time I met him, he was asking me what I did. And he said, oh, let me tell you about my whole nightmare story. But what can you do? Uh, number one is, which I, I'm an advocate, and I'll give you a little of our internal, uh, of our, I'm an advocate for reputation marketing as opposed to reputation management. So you ask, what can you do? Reputation management should be a piece of your reputation marketing strategy, but you don't make money managing. Managing is great. Having systems and processes in place to make your business work well and manage your employees, but that doesn't do you any good. You can't have those if you don't have customers coming in the door. So I'm an advocate of you have to be proactive. So David, the best defense is a good offense, number one is to get out there and start getting a lot of reviews because we all will take those for granted if there's some. If you go see somebody and they have 14 great reviews and one or two are kind of bad, first of all, they might get pushed down to the bottom. You might never even see them. But if you look at all the rest of them, because we can all go online and see um, quality companies that we know, like, and trust, and there'll be somebody who had their dander for the rough because it took four days to get to them instead of their promised two-day shipping, right? And say the, the, so you'll take a lot of them with a grain of salt. If there's more, if you only have five and three of them are bad, you're showing 2.3 stars. And unfortunately, the reality is they could be a competitor. They could be a disgruntled employee. Uh, Google actually even just took away some of the anonymity, put back some of the anonymity of being able to leave reviews. It used to be uh, where you really had to tie in with your Google profile and other things. And the, and the reason is because they wanted to keep people from leaving malicious reviews that weren't real, fake reviews. However, now it's even more important because there was a, several industries that were complaining about that. Plastic surgeons, bankruptcy attorneys, right? People didn't want to go on and say, hey, I just had my nose done or another part of my body augmented, right? Or, hey, thanks, you're the best bankruptcy attorney and having all their neighbors know that they just went through bankruptcy, right? So there were some industries that said, hey, this really sucks for us. We can't get into this. So now it's easier to go on and do these things without and doing them anonymously. anonymously. So you really need to be proactive. So again, uh, now what can you do? I'm going to cover that and some of the things that we can do as far as what you can do. There are some steps I would recommend if something like that does come up for you. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yes. And a notable thing that I noticed when you have friends and family put in reviews, I'm not saying that I did that, um, <laughs> that if they do, they're weighted. If, if there's only one review, they don't even show up. If this, if this person only left one review and they all 
they don't even come up on the feed. Mm -hmm. And same with uh, Google and a lot of the other places. It has to be something that's actively reviewing other places. Mm -hmm. Yelp more so, I, I found. I have a question on that very yep. comment. I, I never, I, I have never, and I, and I don't have them online, but I have never had a negative review from any of my clients. So <clears> one, how do I get them to put the positive reviews? And two, how, how does it not come up? Because these aren't people that use me week after week, year after year. They might need me only two times in a year. But they have like that positive. Set up the system to get as many as possible so that you know some will show up. I was just from the marketing day, which if you do ask somebody, if they don't if they're not actively involved on the, the social media scene, they may not even show up. So but if you get a lot of people, you know, more than likely a couple of them are gonna have some track record on the social media and they'll, and they'll stick. The short answer, which I'll get into, is you ask, number one. You've got to ask them. <laughs> Thank you for that great letter, you know. You gotta look for those referable moments and I'll get into some of the recommended and recommended things. As far as Google pretty much will show anything. Um, if people put it in there, they give you a review, it's gonna show up. If you could I, I could give you a review today. Or uh, we can find we could create a brand new account with no activity on it, give you a review, it's gonna show. Yelp is definitely a lot more stringent on that. They wanna have active Yelpers. So if somebody gives you a review from Yelp that is active in the Yelp community, then that will carry more weight. So I recommend generally, as I'll get into, is, is most businesses, it makes sense to start with Google, and then depending on your industry, Yelp, Yelp will show up heavily for some industries. Some industries, Yelp doesn't show up. So if you do searches and you're not seeing any Yelp results, I would look at it as your secondary. Yes, Susan. I have a different situation. So I have a book, and it's on Amazon, both ebook and regular book. So I ask everybody who I know has purchased it, or I've given them a copy to write a review, and what Amazon does, if it's not a, something they can um, trace back as a purchase from them, they might take the review down, even if it's a good review. So one gal wrote in her review that she bought the book from me at a workshop, and they'll probably keep that up because they can see what the thread is. Bottom line is, get as many as you can from as many different sources because if you throw 100 at the wall and 70 of them stick, you still got 70 that you, you didn't have, right? Yes? What about LinkedIn for business to business? Um, you know, uh, for LinkedIn, we post a lot of our reviews on there, but we don't, when we have clients from them, we, you know, I'll get into it, I put them out. But you can ask, you can certainly go in through, through LinkedIn and get reviews. And people endorse people on LinkedIn. So, you know, there's only so many hours in the day, obviously. <coughs> Unless you want to like open the checkbook up and pay every internet marketing and digital marketing company to do everything for you, then you just kind of start, you, you've got to get focused on a few. So if LinkedIn's a big source of business for you, I would say I would look at Google and, and LinkedIn, for example. One other point I'm going to throw out real quick, just before I forget, don't leave reviews on your own. Hmm, right? So there's a few things they'll do. They will track your IP address so they can tell if you're doing it for the same computer. So either don't do them on your own, and if you're going to ask people to do them for you, don't have them, you can't have them all do it from your computer because it's going to count as from you. They could be legit ones, right? You're sitting in your office and say, hey, give me a nice review. And you have 20 people come through, it's going to show the same IP address. They're like, that business owner's just sitting around. They're going to pull them. They might even delist you. They might even put you in their in their trouble sandbox. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, that can happen to you. Um, so you don't want to do that. Not only that, you want to be careful doing them on your own around at different places because they have algorithms. They get pretty sophisticated. They'll check writing styles, and sometimes they'll determine, like, oh, this is this guy who just went to the library, that he drove down the street, got online to Starbucks, and he drove down the street. I can tell by some of the phraseology that you're using in here, this is the same person. So they do have some steps in place to try and keep them, but there's nothing to really stop somebody from if, if an individual person wants to do something and give you a bad review. But there's places, there's more to stop you from going in and doing it yourself. So, so Chad, I bring that up. Yes, Marty. Is there um, some service available that can monitor all this for you? Because that sounds like what you need to do. Well, you can either monitor it yourself, and that's part of what I do. For example, that's something, yes, there are companies that do that. My firm is a company that would do something like that for people. You can do it on your own. It's a little harder. It takes a little bit more time. But you either got to do it on your own, you got to pay somebody, whether it's my company or another company. You have to you have to either have, pay to have it done or do it on your own. That's your only two choices. Well, there's brandyourself.com is out there now for individuals, and it's starting to monitor all your online presence. I just wonder if there's something for businesses like it. 
Um, yeah, there's businesses. Uh, you know, you can search online, find tools, contact some local digital marketing companies that will have that resource as well. It sounds like it can be pretty overwhelming. Well, it makes it a lot easier um, if you can have something where it just gets somebody else done it. You maybe get it once or twice a month, you just get a nice PDF report funnel to you that you look at. Okay. That certainly is easier. That's okay. something like, you know, for any of our clients are going to get a PDF report at the end of the month. Here's what happened, here's your activity. Again, it's going to be more expensive, but you don't have to think about it. And like I said, you can do that and you can look up, you know, local companies, whoever you want to use for that. Okay, thank you. Um, shoot. Too far. But uh, this doesn't affect me. Because I get all my I get all my business from referrals. I've heard that several times over the years um, from people telling me that, especially when they get into the online marketing world. So my question would be for you. Um, let me go back. Do you think that your online reputation is going to affect your offline referrals? Of course, yes. Why? Everything's interconnected. <laughs> yep. And then the question I have for you is if you get an offline referral, what's generally the first thing that you do? Google. Okay. Google them. Are they legit? Let me find their website. Maybe you just need their information. Where are they at? What's their phone number? Hey, I know a great plumber, ABC plumber. Just Google Nevada City online, Nevada City plumber. I need a great marketing gal. Okay, just you know what? Just just Google. I can't remember her name. Anna's great. Just Google this. Or here's her name. I don't know what the number is. Just Google it. Not only that, when you start to Google it, uh, Google has something called auto called auto suggest. Mm -hmm. Go type into city and business sometimes, and it drops down with suggested ones. A lot of times, when you start getting down to in individual or local searches like reviews, you'll see extended. That means people are typing that type of stuff in. But that generally is what happens. So when people go and do that, what do they do? Well, about 87% when they're, after getting referred to a business by word of mouth, are checking them out online. So almost 9 out of 10 people are going to go look you up, whether it's just to get your information, which I personally do all the time. 9 out of 10 people. So what are they doing when they go online here? Looking for authenticity. They're looking for authenticity, validation, maybe just company information. 52% are, are looking for reviews. So about half of them are going just to say, hey, I know David told me these guys are great. Let me just get their information, do a couple reviews, just to make sure other people like them too. I trust them, but let's trust but verify or whatever that famous rigging line was. So the other one is 35% uh, is the other big one is they're going to look for information on your website. But we know that they Google your name and your website, your business name in the city. What are they going to find? Your Google Plus page and your reviews, Anna. So this is not one of those ones where you can stick your head in the sand and say, I don't know, la, 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 la. I don't know about it, it can't affect me, right? <laughs> How many times do we see that or we think that way as business owners or with marketing? Um, this is one of the ones where it's gonna affect you. So nine about almost nine out of ten people are gonna go look up online, and almost fifty-two plus close to nine, eight or nine out of ten here are going to then also, whether they're meaning to or not, find some reviews and some other things about you. So this is the first one that really affects The next question that I would normally have is, and I'm back. Does reputation marketing impact online or traditional marketing? Yeah, of course. Right. That's what we're getting to. TV magazine ad. What's the most? What's the thing you generally remember? The company name for me. Radio ad. Have you guys ever been driving down the, the street? Heard something? I'm going to check those guys out later. I made a quick note and then Google them, or I want to see more about them, and then Google them, or get a direct mail piece in the mail, and then go Google them, or get your little bow pack, or your little local magazine with the coupons that people are spending money for. Um, SEO certainly shows up, social media, mo mobile, anything online is automatically there for it. So reputation impacts all of your marketing, uh, including referrals. So it's really the first, that's what's really unique about this, it's the first thing that I'm aware of that really affects everything. It affects what you're doing online. It affects what you're doing offline. It really ties everything together. It's really this reputation culture that we're in. And as you get into people that are younger, some younger people in the room, I mean, they've grown up with this stuff. For some of us, I'm 44, if you kind of learned about it, we were there as it changed, but we didn't grow up with it. When you start talking to younger people that are in their 20s, 30s, they live by this stuff, right? They look at reviews and, 
and what their friends saying and other people say, and more and more people are catching on to it, they're even above that age generation. Let me give you a real life example here. I'm not doing this to embarrass any companies, but I did a search. This is a real local search. I did a search for a El Dorado Hills orthodontist. El Dorado Hills down by Poles. So this could have been a general search. This could have been me saying, hey, it's about time for my kid to get some braces. I don't necessarily know a bunch of people that I can get referrals from. I'm just going to do a general search, see what I can find. I could have been referred word of mouth to somebody, and I was checking them out. And they said, oh, you know what? Uh, we use Green Valley Dental. Just do a search for El Dorado Hills. You worked it on us, you'll find it. Could, could have received a postcard in the mail. So, if you're looking at this, where do your what would be the ones that you would typically call? Five stars. Lions looks pretty good to me, right? Mm -hmm. This guy looks pretty good to me. What if this is a guy that you got the referral from? Or two? What if I said, Scott, man, you're living in El Dorado Hills? Check out Green Valley Dental. I don't have their number on me, just Google them. Man, Chad. Is that guy on something? These guys have two point something stars, but look at these guys. Or you got that postcard or you heard their ad that they just spent. So, you know, some of these dentists in North Dallas spend several thousand dollars a month, maybe spend a few thousand bucks that month to do a big mailer. You got it, go, oh, that's awesome. Let me just check them out. Whoa, I don't know about him, but I think I'll call that guy. So it's very powerful. There's a huge opportunity because most companies, if you start doing searches, it's very rare. Some of them you'll start to see filling up now, but most industries, there's a huge opportunity to really get in there and set yourself apart uh, from the competition. So I just want to show you a real example there of a local search that's just from yesterday. All right, so what should I do? And let's get into some recommended marketing strategies. So let's go through a few things that I would recommend for people to do. Number one, let's go over what a strategy looks like. There's three things. Number one is you need to manage as a minimum. That's reputation management. That's our defensive strategy that we talked about. And the reason that's defensive is because you're just reacting to what's already there. Oh, awesome, we got a great review. Ah, crap, we got a bad review. But you're not finding out until after the fact. You want to build your reputation is the other piece. Ask, send an email, send a postcard, make it as easy as you can. We'll cover up, send them a direct link to it so they don't have to go search for you. Test it yourself and click on the link and make sure it works. <laughs> really, right? Yeah. You get it, I'll do it. Okay, I do like it. Well, this doesn't even work, delete. You know, I got to get these kids soccer now, right? So, uh, and then market. will be the last piece. Minimum, good, better, best. Let's put it that way. The minimum, you better keep an eye out what's going on. You should be building. And the next step to really help that drive some revenue to your business is to now take the next step of marketing. So monitoring it is uh, managing is monitoring, uh, doing it on your own, having somebody help you with that, having alerts and reports so that you have real time. You can know when something's going on. The reason you want to know if something's going on, and I think I'm jumping my example by a slide or two, but uh, I'll wait for an example of the monitoring. Uh, build, so you want to train, you want to look for referable moments, that's what we talked about. And you want to train your staff to make sure that they know to ask. That's phenomenal that an employee's gone out and done that on his own. I mean, that's rare to see that type of initiative. So FHE sales is one of your best, if not your best. Wonderful. And it gives an idea for, well, maybe each one of my guys should have their own website page with all their reviews, and then they can just uh, have an easy, it. simple place to go. Yep. Uh, marketing, that's where you can get into now, and this is where we talked about, I think somebody brought up earlier telling the telling people about what you have, we have some discussion earlier, this is where you start telling people about it. Put it on your website, images, videos, you want to tell people. So let's go through each one of these individually a little bit here. Number one, monitor your listings. As a minimum, I jump ahead there, as a minimum, I would recommend it, this is also industry dependent. Just about everybody should be Google, because no matter what, 70% of the people are going to search for it on Google, Google's going to show up. So if you haven't done anything, at least keep an eye on your Google. Uh, Bing and Yahoo, they'll actually are starting to pull from some other sources, like your Yelp now will show up in your Yahoo local listing and stuff like that, your reviews. They've made some big changes recently. Uh, so Bing and Yahoo a lot of times actually are consolidating some of the stuff that you'll see from other companies. I was on Bing the other day and I saw like in their local listing they brought in city search reviews right in their local listing. So, uh, and then for a lot of industries Yelp is very important. So if you do a search, do search for some of your keywords. If you see Yelp on there then that's another one that you might want to think about. And then uh, if you're in a contractor, Angie's List is one. So it can get into some niche different type ones. But if you're going to pick one, start with Google, then go on out from there, depending on what industry that you're 
uh, in. Uh, engage and respond to negative reviews. If you have a reporting system, you can catch these quickly. A lot of times you can, it's a misunderstanding between you and the client. Large dog reserve owner, owners tell me the story. Got pinged for a bad review. This gentleman doesn't happen to be my client. Got pinged for a bad review. Got on the phone. Hey, what happened? What did we do? Where did we drop the ball? Ended up being a misunderstanding. What did that customer do 10 minutes later? Adjusted. Adjusted the review. They adjusted it. They actually went out and deleted the bad one. I actually had an experience with that on Amazon. I bought a cell phone battery and the, the back that came with it because it was extra large broke. And so I posted it on there, and I got contact within 24 hours from the guy saying, I will send you a replacement, change your review, and I will send you a gift. And he actually didn't take anything off of his website I selected for wow. free. He knows the power of it. Yeah, I'm going to caution a couple he, things. Yes. Yes. If you want to do something like that, do it one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Don't ever publish something like that because then everybody's going to be like, this is awesome. Oh, yeah. I say it sucks. <laughs> right? So don't do that. Uh, but if you can, try and engage one-on-one. -on -one. That's the number one thing. If you can and they're totally unreasonable, then put a response in there. Remember, whatever you say on the internet is going to stay there forever. So don't do anything in the heat of the moment when you're angry. Wait, sleep on it, go back. Is this something I want to tax to me and my business for the next forever? So think about that. I uh, mean, if it's malicious or you can prove this, you can always request that something be removed. Sometimes they will actually do it. But number one is if you can engage them. Uh oh, plugged in. Is this going to do you a favor, Matt? Yeah. Somebody just plug me in while I finish up here. So I'll drop off. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and where are we at here? And then mo monitor. So whether that's a formalized report or you just have a list and you do a quick, so how can you do this on your own? Um, once a month, mark on your calendar, do a local search on Google, Yahoo, Bing, and Yelp for your business in your city. That's how you would do it on your own and see what's there. Next step is build your reputation. So as we talked, is you want to ask, I don't see you here anymore, but you want to ask and you want to look for those referable moments. Man, that was the best plumbing experience I've ever had. I've been ripped off, I, but in the past, the last guy, he didn't, he broke, he broke more than he fixed, whatever it is, you guys are awesome. Came out, I felt safe, my wife was home alone, you had a uniform guy, she felt safe, whatever you're getting. Be aware for those, great, awesome. Would you mind saying that for us online? We'd love for you to share that. Most people at that point um, are willing to uh, do that for you. So look for those referable moments and train your staff to look for those referable moments. You can also get a little more proactive. Send out an email. If you have an email list, send out a list with a link to, to your review sites. Um, you can have little business cards with uh, QR codes or direct links to whatever one you're wanting to build at that time. You can go to vistaprint.com now and get 500 of them for 20 or 30 bucks and have them sitting there. Point of sale material, table tent, something at your desk, at your counter, people coming to your business. You can mail a postcard out. So these are all different ways you can do it. You want to. Create a five-star culture with your business and let your employees know that, hey, I understand we all have bad days. But unfortunately, our business is only one bad review away from bad reputation. That's going to affect all of us, including you. So, you know what? Let's go over what we can do and let's train you on how to look for referable moments. Let's train you on how to not transfer your bad days because you're going to have them. Your spouse is going to be angry. Kids are going to be angry. Stuff's going to happen. Don't transfer that to our clients because that can affect all of us. Then the last piece is market. So how can you market these things? You can put them on your website. Put them to social media. You can do po and photo sharing. So you can do that with posts, or you can create graphics out of these, actually. Um, you can create videos. You can get people on video. I've done that. I've got a few on my website where I'm just in the chat. This is, this is great. You know, would you mind saying that again? Everybody has their smartphone. I've got one professional one, but a lot of the better ones are just where they're honest, authentic. Would you mind saying that? Absolutely. Hey. This company's great, they've been great, they've treated me right, I'm happy, whatever they're gonna say, put that up. You can also put it on your offline stuff, in your marketing material. Who says you can't put that on your brochure and list out a few of your five-star reviews on there? No rule against that. So here's an example of what a graphic might look like. Uh, you can kind of create a graphic and summarize what somebody said and then and put it out on your you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, photo bucket, Flickr. You can create a video, either have somebody film it like that, or you can have somebody talk about the review that you've got. You can put that out on YouTube, Vimeo, put it on your website. So there's a lot of things that you can do about getting proactive. Um, 
just as a summary, I guess I can use this as a summary. You want to keep track of what's going on. Then you want to market them on your website, through social media, through social sharing and review type sites. And uh, you can either do that by just rebroadcasting what's been said. You can create some nice graphics if you want to go up and above, uh, above that. So let me just finish up here. And then we'll have a few minutes for some questions and a discussion. So imagine if your reputation, so this goes back to the couple of slides I showed earlier, is imagine if this was you in this review for your business, if this is what your landscape would look like. It really can help you get more customers. It can help you all the way around. It's a great tool. It's a new reality of what we live in. So get on it. Get out there and start asking people. Um, last, I have a poll, actually. How many people actively monitor their reputation right now that's in the room? Well, you guys are on it because the most people I've ever seen raise their hand. There's usually <laughs> one or two, even with more people. That's impressive, really. So who here knows what kind of views would show up right now if you Googled your name and your company? Anybody know what would show up? It's very impressive. Anybody that doesn't, is thank you for having me come out today. If you want to give me a business card at the end, we have this report. It's supposed to stay free up here. Okay. Um, if you want to give me a card, I will email you a link. You don't even have to talk to me. I'll email you a secret link that I have to a tool that we have. We'll, we'll give you a report. So if you don't know what it is, it'll go around on the internet. It'll pull out. Uh, it'll find how many reviews you have. It'll list them total. If you have bad ones, it'll actually pull the verbiage in so you can see what somebody's saying about you. And it'll also check some of the top online areas where you should be showing up. Um, again, there's no obligation. Absolutely free. If somebody wants that, just let me know. And give me a card afterwards, and I'll email you out a link uh, later today or tomorrow so you can go get that. And uh, it sounds like most people have that in the room already, and they know what they're going to. But if you have that and you want something updated, um, let me know. I'll be happy to provide that to you. It's, it'll go out on all the different top review sites where you can leave uh, reviews and stuff for you. So that is it. We've got about five or ten minutes left. Is there any comments, questions, Susie? I think we have a very different issue up here in Nevada County because we have something called Nevada County Peeps. And Sometimes it is um, a very useful site, and sometimes it is a rant site. And if your business is on it being ranted, does this happen to you, Andrew? No. Good. This is a Facebook page. It's a Facebook page, and it's very popular. And again, it's very useful for some things, but oh my goodness, it can go. I've had to go and click, you know, stop this conversation because I just get tired of hearing people who are completely uneducated talk about things they know nothing about. <laughs> and, and it goes on. Have you been affected no, by this? I didn't think I could be affected. And Nico, have you? <laughs> oh, no. Yes. I'm just watching all the people. Yeah. Has anybody... <laughs> Vince is worse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing because we're such a small town. Yes. Um, we is have anybody... different issues than an urban area has, I think. Maybe we could have a little conversation about that. Well, we have the Nevada County, something that contrasts to the vents and the peeps. I think there is. I think Nevada I saw one, does. like Nevada County Positive Stories or something like that. I think I, there is one. There's, there's another one, Nevada County News and Information. Is it a ranting? Uh, no. I don't not not, not so yet. Not yet. <laughs> you guys have done a wonderful job about putting that in the union about positive you know, things for the community. Would that be something that you guys would think about putting up as something positive, you know, websites that are positive. Okay. Well, we have never considered that, but that's an idea. Thank you. That's a bit, one second, and I think we Yeah, the question I had, went back in the days when we first got into this reputation, mm -hmm. um, we used to have source, you know, to India and got thousands of reviews. Uh, it's changed. Obviously, Google is uh, clamped down on that because of the same IPs. Uh, Google, I know, I've got still got friends there, and they're saying they're always refining because they're trying to get the trusted reviews. Yep. I still feel as a marketing of a business, you need the trusted reviews. You're doing it through your customer base, but and when you're building from a new business, you don't have that luxury. So how can you build up um, market reviews, even if they're in, you know, imitations? But, um, you know, there must be some way of marketing yourself in this competitive environment with a new business. And I help people start new businesses, and I'm continually trying to find ways yep. Up from your friends to do reviews. 
it's the chicken or the egg. I mean, it's, it, it is that tough. It's the catch-22 of, gosh, I want to have great reviews, but I'm trying to start my business as, as a business owner. Everybody's always been in that, that dreaded moment of somebody's going to ask for a referral or your other customers when you're trying to get started. Same kind of thing. Number one is uh, maybe there's some thing, there's, you could do something I would call character review. It doesn't always have to be, hey, I used your service. You're the greatest marketing guy. It could be like, I've known you for 20 years. I worked with you at your previous company or whatever you well, had. Really you're an honestly reliable guy, at least to get start getting something up there. You don't have to have a thousand, but they want to start getting some. And then eventually, obviously, they're going to get their first client or two. They want to really be very proactive in the beginning to start getting some of those. But if they have other business people that they know of or that are, that are colleagues of theirs, you can go to them and say, hey, I own an X company, and I'm familiar with this company. He's a or she is a... A great resource has been, you know, helpful for some advice to me, and maybe that's because they talked in a networking meeting afterwards, or maybe they give a speech and they say, "Hey, if you like the speech, can you go to my Google Plus page and just, you know, just give me a, a compliment on, and, and give me a compliment on, you know, that it was great, informative speech, or something like that." So you just got to start doing some things like that. I would not recommend outsourcing and doing all that. No, so the days not changed. anymore. It's changed. You have to clamp down on the span. You're 100 percent correct, and I know you preface it by saying that. But those are some of the things that I would try because it, it, it's tough to start. Do you use LinkedIn in any way of tying into your reviews? Uh, for LinkedIn, the way I use it is when we get a good review, I create, I announce them, they create a graphic, and they're going to go out, and I'm going to make a post on LinkedIn about it. So I'll create hey, another satisfied customer. Here's what somebody said. By the way, here's our phone number. If you want more information? Is your question? Uh, actually, I have a story to share. Sure. So this is uh, my husband. He's been in the diamond industry a long time. He was in the retail. He was a wholesale uh, supplier of diamonds in the retail industry. And then with the whole economy, you know, the whole industry we went through a lot of change. You know. So he found that he needed to reinvent himself because that he couldn't make any more money in that business. So he decided to go into um, the rough diamond business. He was very new, had to teach himself. This is something that you have to learn either through generations of doing it or there are schools. I mean, it's not, nobody can just become a rough diamond gemologist. Um, so while he was learning that business, the question came up and how is he going to get clients? And his clients, mind you, are not local. They're all over the world. Mm -hmm. And they're few and far in between. So we created a website with, for him. Um, we had very small budget and very little experience. So we created, took, used iPage. You know, it's one of those developing sites where you can use templates so that you don't have to know anything <coughs> about it. And. Um, one thing that worked for him, it's a very simple website, but what he started doing is started writing articles about his experience in the industry. He didn't have to write a lot about his knowledge, he didn't have to write a lot about his customers, he didn't have that many to begin with, he didn't, but whatever his experiences and whatever his knowledge, he started writing about it. And just within a year and a half, he wrote so much about the industry. People are always seeking for information. So whether you're plumbing or whatever your industry is, what I'm trying to say is if you write about it and provide knowledge and uh, good information to customers, they'll A, come to your site. Secondly, they start looking at you kind of as an authority. So on LinkedIn, he started uh, putting his blog uh, pages, links there. And very soon, he became one of the top uh, people being followed, great. profiles, and uh, shortly thereafter, as he started going around to different countries and getting clients and stuff, he started being introduced as one of the top gemologists. <laughs> nobody That's great. Who, yep. who made him the top gemologist, nobody. Just the fact that he had a website, and the good thing for him that worked was that a lot of people in his industry are old-fashioned and don't really do things online, so that's a good, yep. positive thing. So he's probably one of the only, there's only one other person who has a website. But secondly, he wrote a lot about his industry. So if you're writing about so you're your talking, industry. So you're talking about blogging, that's a great story. I just want to make yes. sure if somebody else has a question here, we get a little sure. bit of time. So blogging is one of the strategies of getting found, and that yes. obviously is a great one. And that's a whole different, if you want to see information about that, that was one of the other speeches. But yes, 
nice thing is too is the less competition, the more you're going to stand out. Yeah. So if you have not a lot of competitors and most of them never go online, that's awesome. Yeah. But no matter who you are, blogging is certainly giving a way for you to be found and get that trusted authority status. This which all which adds to your site? trusted authority status. Through, the reviews. Which site? Which, would you do it through your, because I love to blog about that, to get known. Obviously on Google, Put it on your own site. things you have. You, know, you want to do it on your old site. And there was a while there where people had separate blogs and there was all this. And I remember, gosh, what are you supposed to do? Have it on your own site. Have your blog. Put I your have blog on. I have my website and then I have my, my G Plus site, but I, I have a, a, just a website for my company. So do you think that it'll pull, Google will pull from my website if I put a blog on there? Uh, I think I follow your question, but on your own website, you want to have a right. blog page and have your content because now your URL is getting, every time you make a blog, you're having new, unique content on your website. You should be working your keywords into it. You should be announcing your blog out on social channels. You're now just created a brand new page for your website. If you do that on a continual basis, that's one of the biggest ranking factors for Google. It's unique content, continual unique content. Mm -hmm. And then if you can share it out, people start looking at it and sharing it. That's called an earned link, and that's the best kind of link that you can get. So that's very powerful, and that gets into the ranking, which is very, so you got two things. We're talking about ranking and then also being a trusted authority. Well, blogs do help with that, but also we're talking here for the local business owner is as well, any business owner, but especially for the local, when people are looking for that service right then and they're on their phone because something is leaking or broken down or they, they're in need of your service, one of the best things you can do is the very first thing they see you is if you have these reviews, you just hit trusted authority status. So right? what, it, it, the, what would your suggestion be on the content of the blog? I mean, clearly I'm not going to talk about my client that I have to deal with for three chickens. I'm going to talk about chess and what talk I do. So that, if you're not, I mean, what would your, how much, how long should it be? What, what would you say the keywords are going to be that they, it's going to pull off, that is going to show up? All right. If you want to talk to me afterwards, I'll be happy. But here's the quick thing I would have: I have three to five hundred words in your blog. I would focus every blog on uh, maybe a couple of, of keyword terms. You do not want to stuff it. Just mentioning them one time is fine. But if you're writing about something in general, make sure you work in one of your keywords that you know people are typing to look for you because if you don't have it, Google can't see it and find you. It's, it's not intuitive, it's a computer. It's either there or it's not. Put it on your blog, link it to a page on your website if it's appropriate that has more information about it, and put a little snippet of your, your, your blog with a um, descript your URL plus a little snippet of your blog and announce that on all your social media channels about the blog when it goes up. That's what I would do. We have time for one more. One, one more. more. Okay. Yes. So obviously, there's a lot of places that you can uh, collect reviews on. Yep. Uh, how many do you think is minimal that you should be connected to? Minimum should be one. It should be Google. That's your minimum. Because most everybody's going to be affected by Google. Everybody. Now, some people can be affected by the other ones, but always Google's going to show them. So start with that, and then go on out from there. Whatever makes sense for you. Like I said, if Yelp is predominant in your industry, then I would go number two to Yelp. Yelp is not predominant in your industry, then I'd probably look at, at Bing or Yahoo, but I still might look at Yelp now because of how Bing and Yahoo are starting to pull Yelp, pull Yelp reviews. So now that I've said it out loud, I would start with Google number one, and then I would seriously consider Yelp as number two if they have any football in your industry. Then you go on out from there. Just real quick, when yep. you're repurposing your content, are there currently any copyright issues with using the Google or the Yelp that you are aware of? When you're repurposing your content, is there any copyright take issues? The review. This is on Google. Google. This is your content. Oh, 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 so if you take the and review. And then you make an infographic with it, or no. you share it on your website, or Google no. does not have content it, rights. No, it does not. And what you don't want to do is copy and paste that review and put it into other review sites. But if you're doing something like that, you're talking about creating graphics, JPEGs, graphics, PDFs, PNGs. it on my website. Okay, so they can't read that anyhow. All right? They can't read a graphic. Yeah. But, but no, what about the text? <laughs> yeah. um, they're not going to read the text in that. If you put it as a text base, in other words, if you have a PDF with a text or a JPEG, they can't read the text that's on there. No, I got that, but what about okay. this plain text? Insert it into a blog post, my latest review. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Don't start singing on other review sites yourself, but if you, have, no, no, if no, you no, re no. reference that in a blog post, no problem. All right. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you coming back to us twice in one year, and I think the audience does too. Remember, you can see this online at NevadaCountyOnline.com um, within 
tell me somebody a week or a week sounds good. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to thank um, our our people here. So we have Craig, and we have Doug, and we have Douglas, and they're doing this wonderful stuff to get us out there. Dennis, sorry, where we can Douglas. be in oh Douglas, right? Where we can be in the universe, and that's where we all like to be. And I'm going to do a little tiny plug. I'm having a book launch tomorrow. So this is on uh, 52 Contemplative Insights. So if anybody's interested, I'll have some of these back here. And it's really fun to do something that is on Amazon, but being sold locally as well, and learning the way to market a book when you uh, self-publish. So big deal. Oh, other big deal, Machen and Evelyn. We have um, a sponsor who is going to give us something. So Evelyn is going to tell us what she's going to give us. Okay. And Machen's going to pull it out of the Does basket. Does everybody have their card yeah. in here? Yeah, everyone got your card in? At okay. least once, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we have... Oh, wait, hang on. There's one yeah, more. I want one of those bags. Yeah, yeah. 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 Shake it up, shake it up. Okay. I'll petition for this one. Okay. I can tell a little bit about it, so if anyone doesn't yeah. know. Um, we have an online e-commerce store called feelingbettereveryday.com, and if you go there, it says go shopping, but it's a blog and a store. We also sell our products on Amazon, and so kind of we're doing this as a learning experiment. So this is our first experiment, but it's a wonderful um, filter bag that can be used for a myriad of uses. Um, technically, a, a nut milk bag is the, is the most searched keyword on Amazon, so that's what we What's call it. What's it? Nut meal? Nut milk bag. Nut like milk. almond milk bag. Like you can buy almond milk. Yeah. Well, you know those plastic gardens that it comes in? They're filled with chemicals. Yeah. Mm. And so you can go buy almonds, soak them, the recipe comes with it, and you just grind it in your blender with some water, filtered water, and you pour it through this, and it takes all of the grains out, and you have this silky, delicious almond milk. You that go. you made yourself and you know exactly what's in it, maybe a date or two for sweetness, and some almonds and some cinnamon and maybe a little cardamom. <laughs> you can make it delicious. and it makes the best sprouts. I have made sprouts for years in jars and sprouting trays and everything. You put some seeds in this, soak them in water for a day or two until they start to sprout, and then get it wet every so often and just there's a little string. You can hang it on your cabinet door with a bowl under it to catch the drips makes the best sprouts. They just start growing and the bag expands and it's wonderful. So if you've ever not had success making sprouts, I know Matt's wife has been making sprouts in it and goes, wow, it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so That's so a this, recommendation. Yeah, yeah. So I'm giving this away and um, we also, if anyone wants to come by and give me their card and, and I will give you a nettle bag if you will go on our Amazon link and give us a review. Because Amazon reviews are super important. And what I'll do is I'll email you the link so you just click on it and you can give us a review and I'll give you another price if you try it out. Fabulous. Um, so, I think you learned something today. Yeah, well I've been doing that. That's I've been doing that. So yeah, we're working really hard. But and on our store we have almost four hundred products, raw, superfoods, organic, everything is healthy, kitchen tools, um, mm -hmm. You know, locally you can get that stuff, but we really put it out there for people in other states and towns that don't have, you know, three organic grocery stores in their town. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so we're having fun and we're learning a lot, and we're already teaching people what we're learning. So, and cool. So yeah, so if anyone doesn't have their card here, we'll close you off. Nice. You don't pick me. <laughs> Global Mer Mercial. Oh, oh, that's David. David. You yeah. always win. Yeah. Yeah.